there everybody and welcome to the next episode of Eastern Napali and in today's episode we are going to look at um, something oh wait I need to talk about what's happened last episode you do see it in the background it's uh, the camel plushie episode if you haven't seen that yet make sure to jump back to the episode of Friday but now let's enjoy what's going to happen in today's episode and uh, yeah I'm going to talk about this in the next second so now enjoy the next episode of Eastern Napali Right, so we are here in the footage of uh, the next episode and uh, first of all before we go into let me just address a few things um first of all yes i'm sorry the sound quality was kind of awful recently and uh, still is not perfect um i tried several things to get my voice a little bit more uh, a bass heavy and a little bit less echo heavy which is totally really a lot uh, harder to do than I have expected because this room simply is a lot bigger and a lot wider and a lot more open than everything I had before so I needed to go into a smaller room uh, to actually record a bit better but this is where I don't have any um, recording setup so it's it's a bit harder to be uh, honest to do that at the moment so I am trying to get the best out of it while by using a little bit of a um, uh, rule kind of thing which I have just sculpted uh, over my microphone and yeah I'm going to try to do my best to improve the setup in the next couple of days uh, to make sure that the sound quality is better again however one of the other things that went wrong in the recent um, episodes was that the level the sound level of my voice was always uh, way too low compared to the music uh, which goes back to a problem that I haven't had for a while now, but which is simply down to YouTube. I don't know what exactly is the problem here, but in my file the sound mix is good. It's, it's really good. I mean, if I put on my headphones, it seems to be great. But um, when I put on uh, boxes and I just, uh, or speakers, I should say, um, then it does sound a little bit different. So I needed to change a little bit of the setup, the audio setup, and finally found the reason why it was the case. Um, I, I, I changed the settings of my headphones and now it seems to be better. I don't know why exactly, but my headphones seem to just do a better job in... Um, separating the two channels of the voice and then uh, it, it does sound a lot better in comparison to what the speaker is able to do so i am guessing that some of you or many of you do watch it on your phones or on your tv or whatever or on your computer with speakers actually so the sound wasn't that great so yeah i have improved that and i hopefully um or you can can hopefully confirm that it does work better now so this is also what I was trying to up the quality a bit and also I'm as always trying to um, just go back and, and read some comments of you guys in the last episode. So first of all I really appreciate that you guys are happy that I'm back and uh, I am happy as well and I, I, I've already talked about that in the last episode quite a bit so don't want to bother you with this again. But um, one thing you also came up with is that uh, you were missing a little bit of an outro, not the outro I have for my channel but like an outro where you can see the actual um, process we have made in the episode and this is uh, something I want to include in the future again not in today's episode simply because I'm pretty late with the recording and I want to maintain the everyday video um, schedule which I want to fulfill at least till the end of May just as a testing month and I'm um, not sure if I can keep up with that but uh, if I have a few games that are a bit more on the let's play basis as you will see tomorrow there will be Anno 1800 finally dropping and this is you know this is a bit easier for me because this is like the, the time you record is exactly also the time of the video so it's way easier to deliver uh, an Anno video each day than it is to deliver a Planko video each day. Um, I want to focus on Planko nevertheless but kind of to have an episode every day of various things makes it easier to have some um, I don't want to call them gap fillers because they are clearly not but um, they fit in those necessary gaps that I need to have enough time at hand to produce quality Planko videos that can be filled with quality let's play videos which then will be um, in the next couple of weeks Tropico 6 it will be um, NO 1800 and we will get back into Parkitect which will be a mixture of let's play and um, time lapse as always so we're gonna continue on the scenarios but also gonna start a sandbox eventually so quite a few things done but now I have to stop topic talking about weird general stuff because we are getting into a building that is my most favorite building in at least the last couple of months 
This building is uh, inspired by a little town. I've already talked about that town quite a bit. It's called Kaloa Town and this is um, close to Poipu Beach on the island of Kauai. And it is um, a very tiny little village where there you can get some nice coffees and there is like a tourist center, uh, some touristy shops, you know, where you can buy some uh, uh, kind of, you know, clothing for uh, going to the beach, like beach, beach wear and stuff. So a really sweet and tiny, cute little uh, village. And this house is, is very inspired by the entrance housing. That was uh, kind of where you get into this little village, which was the inner part of a very green, very overgrown. And then you had all these kind of little cute buildings to the left, right and everywhere around you. And in the middle, there was like a little bit of a... Um, yeah, more, was more like, like a little plaza where you could sit down then and enjoy your coffee. So uh, really nice and really cozy. And I wanted to create this here uh, in this area because one thing you guys came up with as a criticism recently, which uh, I totally agree with, is that um, the park still feels a little bit too much like a park. And uh, the story of Isla Napani is that the whole thing was created from a garden island that was focusing on tourism and local life, which effectively means that we are way too much into a theme park layout already. So we need a bit more influence from the past. And this area over here is definitely this kind of area that seems to be more or less um, a combined area out of what has been the old area, where all the houses have already been there before you started making a theme park out of it. So you could really imagine that these houses, which now are the entrance house or like the little medical center or the shop, that they've been there already as kind of a little coffee or um, simply housing for a farmer, you know? This this kind of stuff can happen and, and this is why I chose to build this house. Also, I went for a slightly different color scheme here. I wanted to make this all a bit more whitish, combined with a little bit different tint of green, which goes into a very bright green. Um, it's, it's mint, so it's somewhat like mint color. If, if you go into uh, the more uh, woman uh, oriented color scheme. They have names for every aspect of a color and I think this could be mint. Um, if it would be my wife, I think she would call it mint. Let's put it that way. Uh, I think that's nice. Um, yeah, this this is me also trying, by the way, over here, um, trying to get a little bit of a roof detail in without making too many details and I, I think I ended up doing anything, I guess. Um, and I found this really nice floor pattern on the workshop which, um, as you can see in, in a later stage, will be somewhat nicer integrated than it is right now. Because I felt like this, this little floor piece um, yeah, has a right to be there because it, it really is super nice and it fits the building style. And you would imagine that this is not everywhere, but uh, you could, you know, people could afford to have it uh, below their houses at the foundation of the house to use these more um, artistic tiles, uh, which look a lot better than only having concrete all the way around. So I love to have this little detail in here. Um, the only thing is that these pieces are always a tad bit too bright in my eyes. So I really want to make sure that I put some dirt decals on later on to make it a little bit more subtle lit because I feel this, this is a bit too bright. It kind of breaks the um, more or less overgrown look of it. It's, it's not overgrown, but it's at least used and I want to make the whole thing look a bit more used and yeah, this is this is what was the main target. By the way, you may recognize that the footage or the, the speed build, I should call it today, is quite quick. Uh, and this is down to the fact that I have so much planned for the next couple of days that I wanted to squeeze this all into one video today because honestly, uh, there is no sense to make uh, two videos out of it because that would be stretching it a bit too far, I guess. And on the other hand, that I didn't want to make this episode awfully long uh, for once because I uh, don't have that much time to record a uh, voiceover right now and also don't want to make the uh, file size too big because our internet is still not the best. It, it's improved now and it will be enough to have live streams and stuff, but it's not as quick as it was before. So uploading uh, takes a while and I don't want to release that episode around uh, midnight today. I still want to give it to you at a time where it is uh, somewhat decent to watch. And yeah, that's, that's basically the reason why I don't want to make it too long. 
however, I still want to explain a tad bit about what I am doing. And you can see that I'm creating a little bit more of a connected plaza over here. One thing I really love about old parks or like small parks is that quite often they use or they do feature flat rides that are integrated in plazas and with planet coaster at least there is this lovely um, little option to disable the fencing around the flat rides and this is what i want to create here i wanted to create a way more open flat ride experience and for once i wanted to keep it completely open but then i put the old fence in simply because of the fact that the exit was just very ugly looking just standing in the middle there but guys it's up to you now to decide whether i should maintain the, the fencing here or if we should just cover up the exit and then keep the rest more or less open because i somehow feel that it keeping it open makes the whole thing look so much more integrated into this area it makes it feel less forced feel less um kind of forced into the area rather than being just a part of the area. I, I don't know if that makes sense. I mean, however, it could be an argument that this has been implemented way later than the buildings were set and the, the, the pathing were made. So it is kind of forced into that area and not, not naturally planned, but well, never mind. It's just a little idea I had over here and yeah. Um, then finally, we built a sign that is saying where the hotel area is. And I wanted to do this for a while, a while but it uh, always was a little bit of a struggle. And now the last thing of the video, and this is something you guys have been criticizing so, so often. And I wanted to do this for a while now, but um, I, I never found the time to go back. And this will be also happening in, surprise, tomorrow's live stream. I'll be back as a, in a, with a live stream tomorrow evening. And we are going to um, basically focus on fixing some issues of the island. There are still a little bit of things to do, some aspects, for example, fixing the pool of the hotel and uh, doing a little bit about the uh, ski lift and all these kind of things. And um, also still improving the hotel, it's not done yet, but I focused really on um, improving this area over here quite a bit since I really wanted to reply to what you guys were coming up with. Yes, the area, um, the lounge area, or like let's say the lobby area, maybe was a bit too open. And I, I agree with the fact that when there is a heavy storm, this could really be not too nice. So as you can see, I have improved uh, the overall structure of um, the wooden roofing. And I have also somewhat closed up the entrance area and the lobby area a little bit. Um, but yet there has to be done quite a bit of improvement. Now we are getting into something which was a little bit, it was not that famous, I should say. Uh, you guys weren't too much into the tunnel, but it, this is the one decision I will take over the feedback and not kind of uh, go back to what you said, <laughs> at least a little bit. Um, mainly because I like the idea of having a bit more backstage to the island. And this is, the first thing is that I am willing to make this hyper-realistic and having a hotel in the back of the island forces us to have some more connection with the harbor area, with the main harbor area. And obviously, yes, we will have a boat's connection, but still the boat wouldn't be landing on the tourist beach. That's not happening. So what we need, we need a restricted area where the boat can kind of connect to and bring all the goods to the hotel that are needed. And this is exactly what I'm building right here. Um, and sorry for copying over the Akkad because I just found this building so jank that I wanted to use it again and slightly just change colors and appearance of it. It is just perfect. It has this little um, office terminal in the middle where you could put someone to guide the, the boat when it's coming to in uh, in this area. And it, it just looks very jank. And this is what I wanted to have in here. And yeah, as you can see, I'm just throwing all the stuff down here to make sure that this looks a bit more backstage-esque, uh, putting all the, ball, uh, the, the kind of... Uh, um, how they called again? Oh gosh, I forgot the name. Uh, the, the oil drums, right? That's what I wanted to put uh, to call it. Uh, I put all the stuff here, some dumpsters and so on. I just feel this gives this area so much more realism and also using the wall to separate that area from it. And also I put down a lot of uh, trees to make a tree line that somewhat separates um, this area from 
the main guest area but also for those people having the balcony towards the side of the backstage area i don't want to make them look directly into the backstage area so this is why i put the trees there to make sure that people are enjoying it still to look at and yeah now the last bit of the video today will be focusing on separating this little kids flat right from the backstage area and effectively also make sure that this part of the backstage is not seen by guests and uh, yeah if there would be the same mechanic as it is in Parkitect I would be making sure that uh, people are not having the stuff management inside so that uh, they are still more happy and yeah that's what I'm doing over here that's pretty much all I can say so for today I'm going to end this episode the commentary over here here um, and I hope you all had a wonderful weekend I hope you guys enjoy Isla Napali and enjoy me being back and I hope you guys will come up with a lot of criticism and um, feedback in the comment section as always let me know what you think of today's uh, process and yeah hope to see you then in the next episode and hope to see you in tomorrow's live stream on Twitch have a good day and bye bye Wherever we may find